This is the Lumix S52, a camera with excellent autofocus. And these are some Canon EF lenses. And using an adapter like this, we can pair them up with no issues. But how does the AF hold up using adapted glass? Well, stick around because in today's video, I'm going to be putting four iconic EF lenses to the test with a Lumix S52 to see whether the autofocus holds up and is as reliable as normal native lenses. But first of all, let's just go through some general housekeeping so you guys are in the know about these lenses and the tests that I did. So I've actually got two zoom lenses and two prime lenses from the Canon EF mount sort of system. I have the 16 to 35, the 24 to 70 f 2.8, the 85 millimeter f 1.4, and the Mark II version of the 35 millimeter f 1.4 as well. And then to put these lenses on the S52, I am using the Sigma MC21 uh, adapter, which essentially allows you to put EF lenses onto an L mount body, and it still has the electrical contact points, so it means you can actually control your aperture on all that fun stuff too. So that's why I'm using it. This video in particular is going to be looking at the autofocus performance with these EF lenses when shooting video with the S52, but don't worry because I do have another video plan that will be all about the AF performance when shooting stills with EF lenses on the S52. So if you want to shoot some photography with these lenses, definitely keep a lookout for that one. I've done a series of tests with these lenses and I've actually used each lens at their max aperture. So that means for the primes, I've used them at f1.4 and for the zooms, I've used them at f2.8. And the reason being is because I'm sure if you've got a 1.4 lens or you spent a lot of money on a 1.4 lens, chances are you're going to want to use it at 1.4. So that's why I did that. And of course, I want to make this test as hard as possible for this AI system so you guys can see truly how well it shapes up when using this adapted glass. Let's just get into it. Okay, so starting off with a simple holder lens up in front of your face test. Um, I've done all these tests at zero, zero and plus five, plus three for AF speed and sensitivity. Um, I think that all the lenses here perform pretty well. Um, as you can see, the uh, Canon EF 2472 2.8 does a really good job at plus five, plus three. Um, it was pretty accurate, pretty sticky as well. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how that was. And then now we're gonna move on to the 6 to 35. And to be honest, of all the lenses that I tested, this one was actually the one that I trusted the most for AF, even at zero, zero, all the way to plus five, plus three. I just found that it stuck on really nicely. Um, and then once you see when we go to plus five, plus three, it does it extremely quickly, very accurately. Um, and also there's not really much pulsing either. Um, also it's worth noting that I did set this lens to 35 millimeters and at f2.8 for this test. Um, but yeah, so really impressed with that one. And then the 35 millimeter at zero, zero. Now you'll find here that actually sometimes it misses the eye slightly. So it does grab focus somewhat, um, especially on the lens, but sometimes it actually misses focus on the eye very slightly, like sort of focusing on, um, I'd say around my sort of neck or whatever. Um, and then at plus five, plus three, I would say that it's sort of solved this issue as such. Um, but compared to the others, I would say that the 35 millimeter at F1.4 was of course not as accurate as the zoom lenses. And then moving on to the 85 millimeter, and uh, this really impressed me. I actually thought that this lens did really well considering um, the compression and of course, everything else to go along with a 1.4 aperture and that added compression. You can see here at plus five, plus three, it acquires focus really, really well, quite snappy. And yeah, I mean, I trust it. I think it does pretty well. Now onto the tappy tappy test. So with this, I was just basically tapping the screen um, on the LCD of the S52. And I did this test both at zero, zero and plus five, plus three for all lenses. And you'll see just how accurate they are. I mean, plus five, plus three on the 2470, it looks really snappy, really, really decisive. There's not much pulsing or anything weird going on. Um, so yeah, that was really good for the 2470, does a really good job. And then again, like I said in the last test, the 6 to 35 for me out of all the lenses actually performed the best for AF. Um, again, it was set to 35 millimeters at f2.8 for these tests and plus five plus three again it's really really nice and um, it's not like really really snappy but it acquires focus in a really sort of organic way i'd say it doesn't look you know really um like long in the tooth um and the 35 millimeter in this test as well did really well but you can see it does take a little bit longer to acquire focus um at zero zero compared to the others but again we were set to 1.4 um and at plus five plus three um again it does a really good job um i actually quite like the focus pulls you get from this lens um, at 1.4. I think it looks nice. And then into the 85 millimeter, so you can tell with the compression, all that sort of stuff. But again, does a really good job. And um, there's not really much to write home with this test, to be honest. All the lenses did really well, I think. And I'd have no issues doing sort of product rack focusing using the spot focus tool on the S52 with all these EF lenses. So yeah, really good results. 
So time for the classic walk away from your camera and run out back to it test. So I've done this with all the lenses. Um, I actually found that this test doesn't really make sense doing at plus five plus three as well because I did do it at plus five plus three as well as zero zero, but the results were pretty identical across the board. So I'm only going to show you guys the plus zero plus zero results because like I said, it just, I mean, they looked identical in terms of how accurate they were and all the lenses did a fantastic job in this. Um, I'm actually really surprised at how well these EF lenses focus with the S5 II. I mean, they focus better than the native lenses do on the S5, which just shows how good this phase detect system really is, considering you can actually use adapted lenses and get, I'd say, amazing autofocus, better than Fuji and Nikon autofocus with adapted lenses. And then with the walk in and walk out tests, again, I did do it at plus zero, plus zero, and at plus five, plus three for this, because of course, the speed at which it acquires focus does have a difference on, um, you know, how quickly it does actually grab onto your subject. So I felt this was a valid test to sort of show both speed and sensitivity settings at. Um, and again, all lenses here, I wouldn't say there's anything to write home about. They all did really well. And I'm again, I was using both of these zooms at f2.8 um, and the prime I was using at f1.4. Um, so at their sort of max apertures and yeah, they all did a really good test. I mean, I say the 84, or sorry, the 85 was a little bit laggy compared to the rest, but it's f1.4 and it's a compressed lens. So I was sort of expecting that. Normally uh, 85 millimeter primes aren't, you know, the most snappy lenses to focus compared to others, but still did a really respectable job, I think. So what do you guys think of the results? Not too bad, eh? When I look back at the results, I was actually really, really impressed and quite shocked actually at how well these lenses performed on the S5 II. I think that the face tech system actually does a really good job with the EF lenses. And of course, something that's crazy is that this autofocus actually performs better with adapted lenses than the S5 and all the other Panasonic cameras did with native lenses, which sort of, you know, puts the nail in the coffin to sort of say that, you know, the AF is truly fixed, even when you are using adapted glass, which is obviously really exciting for us guys. Um, so that does mean that if you are moving around from Canon and you've got a bunch of EF lenses, or if you just wanted a more wide sort of variety of lenses like the EF system allows you to have, and you you know want to get into the Lumix ecosystem, then you can do both because you can easily go out and buy some EF lenses, adapt it with the MC21 and Bob's your uncle, Agatha's your aunt, go and use the AF system. I made a video on the channel quite recently that's more of a deep dive into the AF settings on the S5 II and ultimately tells you the best way to set up your S5 II in terms of the autofocus to make it as optimized for your use case as possible. So if you are going to go out and grab, or you already have an S5 II, then definitely go check that video out. And I've also made a full first video of the S5 II and the S5 II X as well. So yeah, go check those out if you haven't already done so and hopefully I shall see you over there.